My first PA back in the day was a brand called H and H. Solid, reliable, well made. Amp and the front lit up. Some of you may know about them. I had it repaired only the once in all the time I had it. And the repair guy said, this is a nicely made thing. The speakers, 2 by 12 with concentric tweeters in the middle of the cones. I bought it from a gentleman who was retiring. I bought the job lot, everything, all in a case. The stands, sort of steel, slightly rusty things. Speakers sat slightly at an angle, which didn't do it for me. But anyway, it worked. It's great. So just one-stop solution. Bought the lot. It'd probably been better selling them separately, as you know. But anyway. Heavy. Solidly built in those days. Meant heavy. So you bash your legs, you bash things, you have to twist your back and all the rest of it. And I don't know. I felt a bit kind of... It was all right. Sound was... Had an SM58, but, you know, I could be heard. Later, I saw a Bose system, Bose Parts. I think a retailer had done a clearance from a club or something. 802 cabs. I borrowed some money and I bought them. Used them with the HEH, H and H, and very importantly, I had to buy the equalizer. Don't use those Bose 802s without an equalizer. Equalizer, I think, then cost me £230, and that's back in the 80s. So I was even more strapped. But I kept going to the shop and looking at this Bose 1800 power amp. Huge thing with grab handles and fins, cooling fins. I used to go at night and look through the shutters because I thought the guy would think I'm a nutter if I did it during the day. <clears throat> so I went at night and looked. I found a way eventually, before it went, to buy that thing. And what a difference that made. So now I've got my Bose 802s. I bought some stands. The things fit vertically without any slopping about. And uh, one thing about 802s, I've heard a little saying, I hear no highs. I feel no lows. It sounds like it must be Bose. Well, I've got to tell you, with those, I think it's unfair. I've heard them sound horrible and boxy. And two things. You must have the equaliser and the right one. And secondly, the big thing I noticed is you need a power amp that can deliver. So I realised from that that wattage in a power amp isn't the end of the story because this thing, people say... You know, look at the internet um, forums. You can arc weld with it. Well, I don't know what it's got, but when you hit the low notes, it... And what the... what the, You probably know the 802s have got just the same four-inch, something like four-inch speakers, eight of them in an articulated array, so it spreads the sound. Very good design, very clever. Well, I don't know about clever. Yeah. And they force the four-inch drivers to do the top end up to about 15, 16 kilohertz, I think, by an EQ in the... That's what the crossover EQ thing is for and then for the low end as you know four inch drivers won't do low so they force the low end with I think something like up to 17 dB boost up to 50 hertz that's a lot and then a sharp cut off to stop blowing the speakers so you need an amplifier when you're driving that thing that's getting a signal with a 17 dB boost down to around 60 to 50 hertz you've got to deliver that and their series one does in buying gear then It's not just about using it and what you've got really and what it does. A little bit of something else makes your life a little bit more magical maybe. I don't know. So I've written some notes here. The exoteric, the basic things. You want something that performs well for the money. You want something that looks good, doesn't really matter. You want something that's easy to use. Well, you don't want it easy, easy enough to use it. You don't keep making mistakes. Long-lasting would be nice, and a good resale value would be nice. I think perhaps going a little bit beyond that then to the esoteric, that maybe it performs beautifully, whatever that means for you. you know, it looks lovely. I wouldn't call the Bose. The Bose speakers, I think, yeah, there's something special about them with their frog eyes. And the 18th, purposeful, I don't know, I just like it. So you like the look of it. Suits you down to the ground, whatever that means. Part of what that means is the way it's built. I like things that are built. 
built. You know? Built. That's what I like. So it's nice if I'm around that. You enjoy using it, looking at it, touching it, and even thinking about it. Am I weird? Astounded by its longevity. I am. I put the, the rack together in 1984 from second hand mostly. In fact, the thing that failed was the thing I bought new, which was a Lasis Reverb. So I've got another one in there. All the old stuff still working. Superb resale value. But I'm not going to sell it until I can no longer use it. So what is it, what is this about then? It's really right when you're buying gear, from my experience, I would say look at both these. Yeah, the outside stuff, the exoteric stuff, great. But also think about it's your life you're living here and you're performing and your music. And if a piece of gear not only enables you, the other stuff might enable you just as much. But if you get a little bit of this from it, as you use it, it's, it's your life. And I think, have a good life if you can. Save up a bit, don't overdo it, be wise, but it all adds, I think, to something. All adds to your life, I think. So I've got one little thing saying here. See what you think. If you dislike your gear, it costs you more every time you use it. In resentment, what have you. Little niggling things just so it costs you. It's your life and it costs you. If you love your gear, it repays you every time you use it. So good luck if you're hunting and a happy new year.